Bible. Perhaps some of us have found ourselves saying something to the effect of, I don't get anything out of the Mass. We have friends and family who grew up Catholic and don't come to Mass anymore. And one of the main reasons that is reported back in surveys is that people tended to not get anything out of the Mass. And if we're honest, we all have moments where we're distracted or whatever. We come in and we go out relatively unchanged. I have a personal hero of mine, uh, Archbishop Fulton Sheen. Fulton, uh, Archbishop Fulton Sheen was known for uh, a radio show and a TV show. He became very famous in the secular world. But I have reason to believe that he was really a holy man. He was said to serve the poor in, in amazing, extraordinary ways, like in the middle of the night when he couldn't sleep, he'd just go out and comfort the homeless. But he addressed this question in a famous homily. He said, you know why you get nothing out of the Mass? It's because you bring nothing to it. In a very simple way, I propose to you that the Mass is an offering in thanksgiving. Offering in thanksgiving. Friends, there's so many things that we, uh, we might attend or do without fully understanding. We don't bring sufficient knowledge. Whenever I'm around friends who uh, are watching football, you know, they're all loving the game. Everyone's celebrating and really locked in and commenting on this player and the coach and da 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 da. I am clueless. I, like all you football lovers, I support you. <laughs> but I get nothing out of that game. Uh, because I don't have any experience of playing the game, so I bring, I bring no experience, and I don't really understand a lot of the little things, the nuances, the plays, and whatever. When my little brothers and I watch soccer, football soccer, uh, we love it. I, I just love it. It's almost like a choreography of dance, and it's just an amazing thing, the way they move the ball around. And my mom comes into the room, and she will not sit down to watch because she brings no knowledge of the game, no experience of it. The Mass is the same. Consider, when was the last time you might have read something about the Mass or learned something, studied something new about the Mass. For many of us, last time we studied or learned something new about the Mass was in grade school. That's a problem. I have lots of problems, so <laughs> that's one of them. I mean, I've, I was forced to, I, I have studied a lot about the Mass since grade school. It's kind of my job. But, uh, the Mass, the, the Second Vatican Council document on the liturgy, Constitution on the liturgy, says that the Mass is the source and summit of all Christian activity the source from which we get the fuel to live a Christian life. And it is the summit, the climax of all of our Christian activity. Especially prayer. The Mass is the model of all prayer, and it is the most important, the greatest of all prayers. And yet, so often, we don't get much out of it. Why? Because we bring not everything. Mass is an offering. When I use the word offering, a little context. When I use the word offering, one of the images that comes to my mind is weddings. The marriage rite. Uh, yesterday I had, I had a wedding. Uh, and I, I always watch the groom at the beginning. You know, they all come in a process at the beginning of the wedding. They all process down the aisle. Here comes the groom. He stands at the foot of the altar. And then he's watching the, the, the back of the church. And as he sees the groomsmen and the bridesmaid come down, and there's little, sometimes there's a hug as they all line up along next to him. 
And then the groom starts to fidget. And then the doors in this epic moment come and there she is. And at that point, 99% of the time that I do weddings, the groom goes <laughs> <laughs> I love thinking like, what? what? Why is he crying? <laughs> what about all those other girls I could have married? <laughs> no, not even close, right? He's thinking, if she doesn't turn around in the next 20 minutes, I win! You know, he's looking at this beautiful bride and he can't believe she showed up. Meanwhile, the brides hardly ever cry because they're like, this is so, how do I walk in this big dress, you know? And then they look at the groom. I can only imagine, subconsciously at least, brides are like, I did all this and he's wearing a suit. Anyways, what happens next is they turn and face each other during the marriage rite, they hold each other's hands and they say, I, Charles, take you, Samantha, to be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love you and honor you as long as you do the same and always treat me nice and do the dishes and clean the house and treat me with kindness and respect. <laughs> no! No conditions! I mean, the groom, he takes out his ego and says, it's yours. And I, I, I no longer live for me, I live for you. I'm gonna be faithful to you no matter what, period, until I die. That's madness. Offering, that is a real offering of, of not just a thing, of himself. In the mass, Jesus does the same, even more profoundly. This little, these posts, this wooden thing over the altar that's called a corona, it's inscribed with the words that Jesus spoke to St. Jude in the Gospel of John, where he says that the Father and I, for all who listen to my words and act on them, the Father and I will make our home within you. We will abide in you. And this resembles a wedding tent, the Jewish wedding tent. If you've seen the fiddle on the roof, you remember the, the, the wedding scene. And they have these posts, the, the traditional Jewish wedding, you have these posts holding up a tent, a canopy, and that's where the marriage is, takes place. Jesus is here, offering him, himself to the Father. In glory, for, for the glory of the Father, and for our sanctification. The priest stands here at the head, representing the person of Christ, the head. You all are the body of Christ. To really participate in the act of the Mass, you're called to offer yourselves as the body of Christ, following the head. The Mass is an offering. Think of what's happening right after he professed the faith that martyrs have died for and saints have boldly proclaimed. Then comes the offering of the gifts. Down the center aisle comes a family bringing wine and bread. And that wine and bread is placed on this altar as an offering. You and I are supposed to be placing ourselves along with that. The bread and the wine should be a symbol of ourselves, our lives, everything that we are. We hold back. Part of why we hold back is because we get expectations, just like married couples, just like priests. We give our lives away and then we think, oh, but what are you gonna do for me? I'm working so hard and, and you know, I'm not getting anything out of this. It's tempting to think of what I expect. We forget that marriage, that love, is an offer. What helps us? When we're in a dark place, friends, one of the best things, the best prayer that you can pray at all times and everywhere is a prayer of thanksgiving, gratitude. 
The word Eucharist is the Greek word for thanksgiving. When you're in a dark place, it's valuable to think about what, what can I be grateful for? And to try to be specific, Lord, I thank you for the breath in my lungs. Lord, I'm thankful for this chair I'm sitting in or this bed I get to sleep in. What you'll notice is the more you strive to really stretch your mind and your heart to think of what you can be grateful for, the more you'll start to notice how God has blessed you. And when you become aware of a love that's freely given, the natural response is to make an offering. The groom, as he's watching his bride come down the aisle, he's, he can't believe that she is giving herself to him. He knows he doesn't deserve it. And then he turns around and he gives his life away, knowing he has no idea what he's doing, knowing the future he, that he can't know what's coming. But he does it eagerly, easily even, because he's so flooded with amazement and gratitude. Gratitude helps us cut through our anxiety about the world, our anger and resentment about the church, our fears for our children, the embarrassment and shame I carry for my sin. We are obligated to Sunday Mass to speak gratitude and praise to God because that cuts through it all and gets us back into what's true. And that gratitude inspires offering and the offering helps us to bring God's grace into our neediness, into the real troubles of our hearts. We need God's grace. We can't do it on our own. We need the church. That's part of my intention in giving you these cards last week. These little commitment cards, especially this prayer of peace. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. We think that we have to get something before we can give. To be generous means that I have a lot. We, think about it. When you think of philanthropists, who do you think of? Rich people. People who have a lot, they can give. They can be generous. I'm poor. I struggle paycheck to paycheck. I've got nothing to give. Baloney, my friends. Two fish, five loaves. That was enough to feed 5,000. If it's made as an offering and gratitude, God does amazing things with whatever we're able to give him. The dirty water that was used at the wedding of Cana for washing people's hands, when they ran out of wine, Jesus used that. It was offered and he turned it into the best wine. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace, these cards say. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Darkness, light. Sadness, joy. O oh, divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand. To be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in dying that we are born to eternal life. This card is meant to be a tool for us, an annual little commitment renewal to remind ourselves that's right. In the midst of all that I'm going through, I'm called to make an offering of myself. For example, money is a symbol of what we value. We make an offering of it during Mass. It, it would be erroneous for me to think that, well, here's my religious life, my spiritual life, and then my money life is over here. We need to decompartmentalize our lives, put things back in order. Everything's under religion. But not just my money, my time. What do I do with my energy, my, the, the, the time I have? Friends, this card can help. I, this is, there's just a few ideas here. This, this is a two-fold card. You're supposed to rip it in half and turn in the one half. Keep the prayer side. Again, just a tool to help us consider what do we have to be grateful for?
your life. Grateful for the time that you have. Time is a gift. Grateful for the money I have, no matter how small. Am I going to complain to God how I could, I'm not getting more? Or am I going to be grateful for what He's blessed me with, realizing that I wouldn't have anything that I have if it wasn't for His grace, His mercy at work, somehow sustaining me, even in my poverty? This is why we make offerings. It's what we're called to. It's what gives us new life. Offering is, is offering in thanksgiving. It, it does something to us, which is why I want every individual to have the chance to fill one of these cards, including children. If you feel ready, if you've already filled out the card today, I invite you to place it in the collection basket at the offertory. That's what we call that part of the Mass, the offertory. Just like your money is a symbol of what you value, these cards can be a symbol of your whole life. If you're not quite sure what, how you're going if you to, if you haven't even considered filling out the card, no worries. Or if you've been wrestling with it and you're not sure what to do, hold on to it longer. Take it to prayer. Ask God to help you understand what he's, where, where He's calling you to offer yourself more fully. What are some concrete ways that just for this year you can make a commitment? Take it home with you. Pray about it. We'll be collecting them at Masses for the next couple of weeks. But I pray that, and I, I have confidence, friends, that this community, the Lord wants to see come alive with the awareness that the Mass is the greatest of prayer. It's, it's the model of all prayer and it's the climax of all prayer. Because it is an offering that we receive divine life where we can be transformed just like bread and wine gets changed at the deep, deepest level of what it is. It's changed into the body and blood of Christ. If He can do that, how does He want to change our hearts from within as we offer it completely to Him? The climax is yet to come.